This will be our second try at me teaching integrals today. So I'm going to try not to go too fast. I'm not going to try to act like I've already taught it. Now, here is how it works. The first integral is just what do you do if you have x with a power above it? Because remember when you were taking derivatives, you had, if it was a polynomial where you had plus or minus between them, you could take the derivative of each part separately, right? Some kind of facial acknowledgement of that. Well, see, for integrals, it's the same thing. So if you can integrate each part, and that's what this rule is for, then you can integrate some pretty good stuff. It's the reverse of a derivative. Some books call it anti-differentiation. Okay, way too lazy to say anti-differentiation integral. What you do simply is you write down any constant that's out there. I always skip a space there when I'm really working on it. Add one to the power and then put the reciprocal out front. Because remember, when you took the derivative, you subtracted one. So if you're doing the opposite, you do what? Add one. Okay? And then put the reciprocal out front. Then, just for put a plus C. Now, the C stands for any number that could have been there that when you took the derivative, what happened to that constant? It became what? Zero. Is that okay? So that C is there for later when you need to think about, well, was there a constant out there? And if there was, how do I find it? We're going to teach you all of that. But for right now, you just got to know there could have been a what? Constant. All right? And that's the first rule. And that rule works for lots of good stuff. You'd probably like to see some of that good stuff. Probably not. But, you know, hey. Right, here we go. Let's say you had x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x plus 3 dx. Now, the parentheses are here to show you that the dx goes with all of that. You can just it out the dx and put it here, 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 and here. Uh, later on, you will separate integrals into two separate integrals. You could actually make this the integral of x cubed plus the integral of x 4x squared minus the integral of 2x plus integral 3. And you could put that integral sign in front of each one as long as they're added or what? Subtracted. We don't need to do that. That would be too weak for you guys. You're going to add one to this power, put the reciprocal out front. Write down your 4. Write down your x. Add one to the power, put the reciprocal out front. Minus. Write down your 2. Put your x. Add one to the power. Put the reciprocal out front. Now, let's talk about the little constant out here on the end. This plus 3. Let's talk about that plus 3 that's out there. That plus 3 is understood to have an x to the 0 after it. Add 1 to that 0 and you get what? x to the first. and then put a 1 out front. Do I really need to put a 1 up there and a 1 underneath? No. You know it's there. And then you simply do what? Plus C. And you can handle any kind of uh, polynomial of these, x to the power plus x to the power minus x to the power, by simply using that first rule. Question on that? Anyone? All right. Now, just kind of having fun here. Dx. If you solve something like this, you want to try to always write where it's x to a power. Try to turn it into this polynomial of x to a power. So this one's going to become what? x to the negative one third. 
Is that all right? This one's going to become x to the negative one half. And this one's going to become what? x to the negative four dx. Again, I should have put parentheses around the whole thing so they just get in the way. Now, apply the rule. X to the two thirds. Put the reciprocal out front. X to the one half. Put the reciprocal out front. X to the negative three. Put the reciprocal out front. So anytime you get these that are written kind of weird, you can always try to turn them into these polynomials. That's the key right there. If you can turn them into a, just a list across there, plus or minus x to the powers, you've got a rule that works. So far so good. Question. Can't be that easy. I've got to be doing something wrong. So I'm just, you know, just falling on the board. So far, so good. All right. Now, let's see what we can do with this. Oh, and uh, it does have to have dx out there, or dt, whatever variable you're using. Because later, there'll be x's and y's, and dx's and dy's all in the same problem. Uh, so you need that. All right. Integral, 3t square root of t dt. You can't use your rule because you got these multiplied together. So you can't use the rule. But what could you do to make it where you can use the rule? Yeah, multiply them together. 3t, 3 halves, dt. Because that's understood to be what? t to the 1 half? Time, and now you can use your rule. So always look for ways you can rewrite them to use your rules. And of course the problem you run into is not the calculus step, It's knowing enough algebra to get to where you can use the calculus step. See, that's the whole problem is, is knowing enough algebra to use the calculus step. Happy so far? All right. Now, here we go. I'm going to write this one, but I'll make sure everybody's happy. Happy. Makes me think of uh, Pulp Fiction when I say that. Are we happy? You don't know the movie, then you don't catch that line. But Samuel L. Jackson looks at the other guy that's in the room with him and goes, Are we happy? And he goes, We're happy. Now, integral 1 over x squared plus 1 over x dx. Somebody says, Mr. Evans, that's a chump easy. And you're right, it is. x to the negative 2 plus x to the negative 1 dx. And we're going to use our rule. Add 1. Take the reciprocal. Still negative 1. Plus Add 1. You see the problem? Yeah! <laughs> okay. Bad. That's bad. We don't want that to happen. Because we know that we really didn't take the derivative of meaningless or undefined in order to get that, did we? Right? So what you find out 
is the rule that I just taught you a few minutes ago. That only works if P does not equal negative 1. That rule won't work all the time. Okay? It won't work if P equals negative 1. Right? And I know the book doesn't use a P, the book uses an N or something, but P is helpful because power. The power. So, the mathematicians were going to realize they had really had a problem. Because check this out. That rule over there would work for x to any power under here except what? The first power. Okay? In other words, if I had 1 over square root of x, it works. If I had 1 over cube root of x, it works. If I had 1 over 5x five, uh, five squared, it what? Works. Okay? But it won't work for a really simple one. It won't work for this. Yeah, it won't work. I hope this shows up. Probably does it. It won't work for this or this. Like that. It won't work for those. Now, I understand if this were had a 2 here, it would work. If it had a 3 here, it would work. But if there's a 1 right there, it doesn't work. Okay? So, yeah, this rule right here does not work if P equals negative 1. i got to see if the the yellow, uh, orange shows up. Oh yeah, you can see that. Well, the mathematicians got together and decided they better erase the bad. And they created a function. What do you call it when mathematicians get together and create a function? What kind of function is that called? Please, someone make me feel good about today. I got a guy in here that wants to major in philosophy and he doesn't know. Thoreau was a. I don't know if Thoreau yeah, really was. What are we talking about? Transcendentalist? Yeah! yeah. Transcendental function. Huh. Transcendental function. Transcendental function. I may have misspelled it, but that's transcendental function. I think you're right. Transcendental function. It's a function we know should be there. But it's not. It's not something we can do algebraically. See, that's algebra. We add one, put the reciprocal out from it. Fair enough? This is what we just had, we need. That is natural log of the absolute value of the x plus c. Now, the natural log of x is a function that's built around calculus. Matter of fact, if you're taking calculus a lot of times, we just tell you right up front, there are no other logs because any other logs that exist, we're going to work them as, uh, uh, we're going to work them as, what was I saying there? I lost my train of thought there. Natural logs. Log base 10, uh, it's cool, it's neat, but it ain't calculus. Natural log. It's a function that calculus needed so that when you take the derivative of it, you get 1 over x. And we're going to tell you more about what these do as time goes on. As we do, you'll see why we really needed that. Now, so just please realize if you ever have 1 over x or x to the negative 1, you're not going to be able to use the rule on the right. You're going to have to use what? The natural law rule. Happy? Okay. All right. And I'm throwing that in today because someone is going to ask, well, what happens if you have 1 over x or x to the negative 1? Because that rule won't work. And they're right. It won't. Now, to make life kind of fun today, to show that I really care about you, I ran off more than one, and so kind of caring. 
And you may pick any even number down to number 28. Pick any even down to 28, and we will work it. Any even number down to 28. Yeah, I hadn't taught y'all the trick yet. So don't, don't ask about the trick. We may get to that by the end of the hour, but probably won't. Pick one, 1 through 28. Yeah. Number 12. Okay, number 12. This is light hold. And you know if it's Mr. Light Hold. Uh, priest of Calculus Light Hold. Light Hold. 5.1. Number 12 is. A little integral, 3u to the 5th minus 2u cubed du. All right, see what you can do with it. What do you think? The u is, as long as this and your variable match up, for right now they're always going to match up. All right, they always match up. I bet some people already have the answers in here. What do you get? I'm going to let y'all talk to me. One half one x half. to the six minus one half x to the four. Close to. Oh, yeah. Is that what everybody got? Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. I like that. That's number 12. All right. Pick another one. 26. 26. Man's like, let's just go ahead and do Let's get serious here. All right, anybody got a question about 12? Okay, 26. you do it you get the same results because they're both right but what could you do to this y to the negative one half yeah and then distribute it that's not how I usually teach it but it is the best way it's easiest to explain it's easiest to work and I don't know why I don't always do it this way now after you distribute that out get y to the seven halves. Now, Mr. on the back row, Mr. Carter. See this little integral sign? Yeah. You have to put those there until the step that you integrate. All right? I don't know if anyone else in here would leave them off, but I know he would. Yeah, you got to put them on there until you integrate. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems in the later, higher level stuff. Plus 2y to the 3 halves minus y to the negative 1 half dy. If you try to leave off more than I leave off, it's a bad day. You've got to realize how lazy I am. Okay, tell me what you get when you work it. Y'all no, are some of y'all are y'all may already work it. Yeah. See what you get. At the end of the day, I'm trying to have energy. I'm trying to care about the children. You know, if you have to take count two in college. This is your last hope before the F. All 
I always just write the constant down, add the one, and then I just put it right in here. And that way I know I got to do what? Well, it's time to go on the next step. It just makes it easier for me. I don't try to get the number out front first. Get the power, then put the reciprocal out front. Think of it that way every time. Negative two. Let's see. And so that would be what right there? Four fifths in the middle. Is that okay? And there you go. So notice the key here is being able to use some algebra to rewrite them. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Yes, you must put the little DT or DX or DY out there on the end. That's the case where I'd write the 27 down, leave me a little blank, then do t to my power, and then put the reciprocal out front. I wouldn't try to do all that in my head at one time. Wait, why is it eight thirds? Would there not be nine thirds? Ah, uh, okay, that's three, that's nine thirds, right? Oh, minus the one. Minus the one third, yeah. Don't forget, I went ahead and distributed that out in one step. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. There you go. So, like, if we were on a test, we would just look at it like that. I'd multiply the 3 times 27 to make it look pretty. Okay. okay? Now, the good news is, uh, we're figuring that by the time you get to here, you can do that, right? 81. Yeah, 81, 11. T to the 11 thirds. Minus three halves t to the two thirds plus c. I like that. Okay, now I'm going to show you something about why it's important to label the dy, the dx, why it's important to put that information out there. Uh, I mean, it's it's way down the road for you. But since I know a lot of y'all are going to be taking some serious math, I want to go ahead and show you why that's important. Okay. If I have this interval, See how it has dx out there on the end? See where it's got the dx? Everybody see that? That's very important. That is telling me to treat the x as the variable and treat the y as a constant. So I don't add a power to that y and put the reciprocal out front. That y is considered like a number. Five, six, seven. All right? So what would happen is I would get x to the third 
one third, is that okay? Plus, the y is just like a number, like a seven or an eight. So I would get y, x squared, and then I did go what? Two. Don't add one to the power here, you add one to the power where? There. The y is treated just like a constant. Like if that were 7x, it would be 7, 7, x squared times, <laughs> man, caught me on that one, didn't you? Yeah. There you go. All right? Plus y times x plus c. Because if that were a 3 or a 4, and you integrate it, you'd get 3x or 4x or 5x. Is that okay? So, so later on, when you take multivariable calculus, this is going to tell you what variable to integrate with respect to. All right? If they had dy out there, you wouldn't get the same thing that I just got, would you? Huh? Is that okay? See, the are confused on that last term, the y. Okay. Say that was a 5. Mm -hmm. You ready to get 5x? Mm -hmm. If it was a 10, you get what? 10x. Mm -hmm. So it's a y treated as a what? Constant okay. times x. All right? So that's the reason I'm telling you it's important to put the little dx's and dy's out there. For right now, until you're in count 3 in college, it's always going to match. If you got dx out there, you're going to have x. If you got dy out there, you're going to have y. But I'm just telling you in the future, that doesn't always happen. All right? Got to step down the road. All right. Now, the next little bit of information I want to give you is about trig functions. And the nice thing about trig functions is you already know these. And I'm going to show you why. If you integrate cosine u du, you get sine of u plus c. When you took the derivative of sine u, you got what? Cosine u du. If you know your derivative rules, you're in good shape. If you don't know your derivative rules, forget it. I didn't say transfer to Captain Tree while I'm on tape. All right. Now, let me show you how that works. Let's say you had cosine pi x dx, and you want to integrate it. Folks, see this word says u right there? Right? This is your U right here. Now, what I tell students to do is go over here and write U equals whatever your U is. This is what your teachers in college don't do. And then you take the derivative of that. And you get pi dx. That tells you what needs to go in this blank right here. Because this has to be your DU. So everybody okay? This part needs to be your du in order to use the rule to see cosine u du, right? Okay? What's missing right here that need if that's u, what's got to be here for that to be du? A pi. Yeah. Is everybody okay with that? Go put in the pi. When you put the pi here, folks, put one over pi out front so that you're only multiplying by one. Pi times 1 over pi is 1. But you've got to put that pi in there to be your du. Alright? And the easiest way to get it right is whatever you're claiming is your u, write it down over here, take the derivative of it, and see what you need to put in that blank right there. As long as it's a constant, you put the constant here and put the reciprocal out front. Okay, big, big statement I'm about to make. Will everybody write till they're ready, and I'm going to make a big statement. All right. Watching me and ready. You may put a constant here 
and the reciprocal out front. You cannot put a variable here and a reciprocal out front. If you put the variable one, if you put x here, you got to put one over x on the same side of that integral sign. Everybody hear that? Okay. You can put a constant and the reciprocal out front, but you can't do that with an x. Can't do that with a variable. Now, so you get 1 over pi, and the integral of cosine u is sine u, so then you just write sine pi x plus c. And that's how you integrate trig. And the catch for integrating trig is to make sure you always have the right du. Okay. Now, if you're working trig problems, and you keep getting this part right, I look at what I'm showing you right here. You keep getting this part right, but your coefficient's wrong. You know why? Because you're not making your du right. The du, yeah, it goes away. Because when you took the derivative, it put the du out there. So when you integrate it, the du goes away. But if you don't put the right number out here for your du, you won't put the right number out front. And that's the reason you see kids all the time integrating in college and their coefficients are wrong. Because they didn't do the DU part. So far so good? Happy? Okay. Now, trig rule number two. If you integrate sine u DU, you get negative cosine u plus c. And the reason you get the negative is the derivative of cosine u is negative sine u. So the negative would make a negative times a negative, which would make what? Positive. If you will notice, from left to right, these are integral rules. From right to left, they're derivative rules. From left to right, it's an integral rule. From right to left, it's a what? Derivative rule. So you know your derivative rules, life is good. If you don't know your derivative rules, you're not, well, I'm not going to say anything real negative. If you don't know your derivative rules, okay, sign. And I'm going to put an x out front just for fun. x times sine of x squared plus 1 dx. Now, that x is in the original problem. I'm not putting that x in there. That x is where? In the original problem. Alright. Well, you know something there. I don't have a rule for 